The Barbarian in Dungeons & Dragons probably conjures some of the most visceral imagery. The ferocious combatant charging into the thick of battle, recklessly swinging their weapon, taunting their foes, and delivering brutally crushing blows. It's not hard to see why someone would want to play the class. The problem the Barbarian has always seemingly had, though, is that it's hard to keep someone wanting to play the class, since the feature set felt a little bit stagnant or on the linear side. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it doesn't offer a lot of interesting choice for players who perhaps wanted a little bit more out of the class. And the subclass options also tended to fall a little bit flat, largely due to the fact that they've often failed to compete with the Path of the Totem Warrior, or they punished you for using your mechanics like in the Path of the Berserker. In UA5 for 1D&D, the design team attempted to remedy some of the issues by giving the class some additional utility outside of combat through primal knowledge, changing the way that rage works, and by restructuring the class progression entirely. However, UA7 has completely done away with the restructuring. They've added a number of fairly small but solid buffs, but still have seemed to fail to address the issue of the lack of interesting class features. I'm looking at you, Brutal Critical, but we'll get there. Also, in an effort to rebalance the subclasses, they've opted for nerfing Path of the Totem Warrior, now called the Path of the Wild Heart, instead of simply making the other options more competitive, and they've introduced a new subclass, the Path of the World Tree, which, conceptually at least, sounds amazing, but it's just in the design that it feels like it's tripping all over itself and could surely use another pass or two. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about the UA7 Barbarian. Rage remains unchanged from the version that we saw in UA5, but since I apparently didn't make a Barbarian video for that version, I'll briefly cover it now. The core functionality of Rage still remains the same. You still gain resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, you still gain additional Rage damage to your attacks, but this now also applies to unarmed strikes. You still gain advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, but you also cannot cast or maintain concentration on spells. The bigger difference here is how you maintain your rage. In 2014, you could maintain it by attacking an enemy or by taking damage. This had the benefit of encouraging the Barbarian to always be in the thick of things, surrounded by enemies or lashing out at them, but also came with the obvious oversight of ignoring encounters that featured primarily ranged attackers or spellcasters. During these situations, it could be incredibly difficult to maintain a rage, so it often wouldn't be worth it to even bother entering it. Now in UA7, you can maintain your rage in any of three ways. You can make an attack roll against an enemy, it doesn't actually need to hit, you can force them to make a saving throw of any kind, or you can use your bonus action to extend your rage. These are some really nice quality of life changes, since they put the agency back in the player's hands and makes the feature far more useful in a larger variety of combat encounters that don't simply feature swarms of melee attackers. Each time you extend your range, it lasts until the end of your next turn for a maximum duration of 10 minutes. This also gives it additional utility outside of combat for simple intimidation purposes or for use in conjunction with the new third level feature, Primal Knowledge. I'm currently trying to reach a stretch goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you'd like to help support me in that journey, a sub to the channel would be incredibly appreciated. Thank Thank you so much. Though Primal Knowledge existed in name in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, the version presented in UA5, which remains unchanged in UA7, other than moving from second up to third level, is a vastly improved version of the feature. Primal Knowledge gives Barbarians a true functional use of their rage while outside of combat. The feature allows you, while your rage is active, to make acrobatics, intimidation, perception, stealth, or survival ability checks using your strength, even if they wouldn't normally be done that way. As much as I love the addition to this feature, it's hard to not laugh at the amusing imagery of a barbarian becoming so angry that they become more stealthy or have more focused senses. So even if it doesn't always make a lot of sense, I'm really happy that this feature exists. It makes the class feel less like something that is only relevant in combat and helps it work with the rest of the party in an interesting way that still consumes a resource. I really like it. The class also receives the Weapon Mastery feature at first level. I've spoken about it on numerous occasions before, so I won't really go into it here. I love that Weapon Masteries exist, it gives a whole new dimensionality and utility and reason to use these different weapons, but I still think it can use some tuning to make it a little bit better. At second level, Barbarians still get Danger Sense, though it now has been slightly improved. In 2014, you gained advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you could see, but did not apply if you were blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. The UA7 version now functions exactly the same, always giving you advantage on dex saves as long as you aren't incapacitated. I really like this improvement since it clarifies some of the ambiguity in the feature and makes it less of a Mother May I feature that the team has talked about trying to eliminate as much as possible of. The 2014 wording of that you can see always left some questions. If your back is turned to it, could you see it? I've had a Barbarian player in my campaign now for over three years, and I still get the very fair question of, do I see it coming? And it really sucks for a player to have to feel like they need to ask if their supernatural abilities work or not. Removing that stipulation and making it only not apply while incapacitated is a great change in my view. 
Also at second level, Reckless Attack gets a nice buff that also functions as something of a quality of life improvement. Previously, when you use the feature, you only gained advantage on attacks until the end of your turn, but attacks against you had advantage until the start of your next turn. This meant there were two different internal clocks for one feature, and made it something of an asymmetrical feature, as the enemies would have longer to take advantage of the advantage than you would. Sure, you can call it opportunity cost, but it always felt a little bit off to me. Fortunately, now that asymmetry is gone. When you recklessly attack, you also maintain the benefit of having advantage until the start of your next turn, which also allows it to work well with opportunity attacks and various other class features. The fifth level features extra attack and fast movement remain unchanged from their 2014 versions. And if you're to stop here, you might just think that the class feels like a solid improvement overall, kind of like what we got with the UA7 Warlock, but unfortunately, this is kind of where all the good stops. Don't get me wrong though, the adjustments to Rage, Primal Knowledge, Danger Sense, Reckless Attack are all great and they do make the class feel much more functional, cohesive, and powerful from early levels, but it was never really the early levels that Barbarians struggled with. Like I mentioned at the beginning, they struggled with giving players a reason to stick with the class and suffered from a bit of an illusion of choice in regard to the available subclasses, very little of which has been addressed in UA7. 7th level still brings Feral Instinct, which provides advantage on initiative rolls. Interestingly, it does away with the surprise component of the feature, which allowed you to still act on that turn, provided you raged before you did anything else. Though I suppose this technically qualifies as a nerf, I'm not that upset about seeing it go. It was always such a clunky feature, and in practice, I feel like very few tables incorporate surprise as intended in 5th edition. Its removal honestly makes me wonder if they're going to be revisiting that mechanic as well. There are still a few lingering mentions of it, such as in the incapacitate condition, but I wouldn't be surprised, pun intended, to see a change to that as well. Also at 7th level, you get Instinct of Pounce, which is ported straight over from Tasha's. As part of the bonus action to enter your rage, you can move up to half your speed. I am happy to see that this is being included in the base class. It's flavorful and useful, and I like it. But again, it hardly feels like a compelling reason to be excited about further progression into the class. Brutal Critical has returned to 9th level, but this time you simply get an additional 1d12 when you critically hit with a strength weapon or an armed strike. This increases the 2d12 and 3d12 at 13th and 17th levels respectively. The thing about Brutal Critical is that while it isn't bad on the face of it, it's really just not rewarding enough to be consuming three of the class's high-level feature slots. Thematically, it's perfect. It feels so right with the Barbarian. Who doesn't love rolling extra dice, especially d12s, the coolest of all the dice, and even more so when coupled with Reckless Attack. But for it to be the entirety of your 9th, 13th, and 17th level features, and only provides a single d12 on each, just kind of feels like a bit of a flop. Some additional utility here, like to do something with weapon masteries or for it to come with some bonus small buff, would feel so much better as far as class progression is concerned. Relentless Rage maintains the same change that it got from UA5, which is to say that now, rather than being bounced to one hit point if you were to fall to zero and succeed on the save, you instead regain hit points equal to twice your Barbarian level. I do really like this change. At a bare minimum, you get 22 hit points, which isn't insignificant. It also helps sell that the Barbarian is a seemingly unkillable machine. Incidentally, it also helps reduce the reliance on spells like Healing Word and the whole Death Yo-Yo thing that I've spoken about before in a bit of an indirect way. It's a clever approach, and I kind of like it. At 15th level, Persistent Rage makes it so your rage lasts the full 10 minutes without needing to anything else to extend it. It also incorporates the UA5 17th level feature, Rage Resurgence, by letting you regain one use of your rage if you have none remaining. I'm not going to talk about it, I swear. Again, this just fits well with the Barbarian aesthetic. Rage is effectively permanent now, and you have the potential to regenerate it if you meet the dumbest criteria, but hey, at least it's there. Indomitable Might at 18th level just feels underwhelming at best. By the time you made it to this point of the game, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to be struggling with strength checks or strength saving throws, but at least it was expanded to include those as well, I guess? This coming much earlier like it did in UA5 felt like it made a little bit more sense. 20th level restores the game's most exciting capstone, to me at least, Primal Champion. Sure, it's just a static stat increase, but you're kidding yourself if you think the first time that you didn't read it, you thought it was super cool. Plus, who just doesn't love super high numbers? As for the subclasses, UA7 presented us with four, Path of the Berserker, the Wild Heart, the World Tree, and the Zealot. I'm going to touch on both the Path of the Wild Heart and the World Tree. For the Wild Heart, the third level feature, Animal Speaker, is essentially exactly the same as the old Spirit Seeker feature, except that it now specifies that it uses Wisdom as your spellcasting ability. The more controversial change comes with the revised Rage of the Wilds feature, formerly known as Totem Spirit. Previously, it was hard to make a case for not choosing the bear, since it made you resistant to every damage type with the exception of Psychic. This just presents so much power that it made not choosing it, even if you were opting for a more thematic build, feel insanely difficult, 
As a result, it effectively crowded out the other two choices. The new version of the bear option allows you, when you rage, to select any two damage types to gain resistance to, with the exceptions of Force and Psychic, which you cannot choose. It's rare that I advocate for nerfing something, I tend to live by the idea of balancing up, whereby rather than making something worse, we make the other options a little bit more viable. In this case though, I'm actually kind of okay with the change to having the player choose two resistances. This feels fair and not overpowered or underpowered to me. In most cases, you will know which one or two damage types will be the most relevant based on your location or the story in general, so having two additional resistances is effectively the same as it was before since it's unlikely that you'd be encountering every different type of elemental damage simultaneously. The issue that I see, and as others have raised as well, is the inability to select force damage as a resistance now. In 2014, force damage was actually quite rare to come across, however in recent years force damage has actually become quite common. Since the monster snap block shifts in Monsters of the Multiverse, including the magical weapons essentially now just dealing force damage rather than damage that is magical. I feel like we should still be allowed to select force, especially as it's now more prevalent than ever. Otherwise, the eagle and the wolf options receive some minor buffs. The eagle choice may be slightly more difficult to execute if you need to extend your rage through the use of a bonus action, you won't be able to use your dash and disengage from the eagle feature but those situations seem fairly niche. The 6th level feature, Aspect of the Wilds, changes the feature slightly, but probably makes them more usable overall. Each grants you now either a proficiency or expertise in certain skills. Overall, while maybe it loses a little bit of the flavor of the older versions, I do like the change. 10th level, Nature Speaker was also clarified to specify that Wisdom is a spellcasting modifier, but it's essentially the same otherwise. The final feature, Power of the Wilds, formerly Totemic Attunement, receives some buffs all around. The most significant of which is probably the Falcon, formerly the Eagle, which now just straight up gives you a fly speed equal to your speed and does not end at the end of your turn like it did previously. The new subclass, the Path of the World Tree, symbolizes the Barbarian's connection to the planes and its ability to call upon the World Tree itself to provide some additional power. It's a super cool theme and I'm happy to see it being explored. The third level feature, Vitality of the Tree, allows you to regain hit points equal to your Barbarian level when you enter your Rage. This feels pretty insignificant basically the whole way through your career. Regaining 3 points, even at 3rd level, isn't really doing a whole lot, and neither is getting 20 at 20. The ability to provide temporary hit points on each subsequent turn by rolling an amount of d6s equal to your rage damage is a really nice touch, and I think is sufficient for its purpose, and scales nicely with the class. A buff to the initial healing may make this feel really good. At 6th level, Branches of the Tree allows you, while your rage is active, to summon spectral branches of the world tree to surround any creature that ends its turn within 20 feet of you and force it to make a strength saving throw. If they fail the save, they are teleported to an unoccupied space within 5 feet of you. This is an interesting feature that has both offensive and defensive potentials. It can be used to pull a party member out of harm's way, especially if we consider the additional wording which states that in the 2024 Player's Handbook, it'll be clarified that any creature can opt to fail any saving throw, which is a nice clarification to be getting. However, it can also be used to pull a ranged attacker or spellcaster within melee range of yourself, though this does conflict a little bit with the next feature, Battering Roots. Battering Roots comes online at 10th level and extends the reach of any of your melee weapons by 10 feet. This makes your standard reach now 15 feet with any melee weapon or extends the reach of any weapon that has the reach property to be 20 feet, which essentially nullifies the offensive purposes of branches of the tree. It just feels like such an odd design choice to have a subsequent feature in a subclass render half of a previous one worthless. This could probably use an additional pass, but I do love the flavor that it brings. Finally, travel along the tree just feels very niche and not really worth a 14th level feature. Many campaigns don't really involve planar travel or teleportation, but if they do, by the time that you're 14th level, you probably have other ways of accomplishing it. It is an interesting flavor feature, but I feel like it fails to resolve one of the main issues of the class, which is to keep people wanting to play it for longer. Overall, the Barbarian main class still just feels like it flounders after 5th level. Sure, you do get some nice, if not minor, utility features like Feral Instinct, Instinct of Pounce, and Persistent Rage, but these simply don't feel compelling enough to make playing 10 or 15 levels of Barbarian truly worth it. Brutal Critical is a super fun feature, but it is taking up 3 high level slots without contributing all that much, and just feels like a missed opportunity. The revised Path of the Wildheart isn't bad, it received a lot of improvements overall, but I can't help but feel like the force damage should be included in the choices for bear at 3rd level. Overall, the usability of the subclass feels much improved and less like there's one clear choice like there was previously. Path of the World Tree, on the other hand, really feels like a first draft. There are some really interesting ideas and flavor pieces included that I would love to see explored more, but right now the nearly irrelevant healing and features that potentially counteract each other feels like a bit of a design miss. 
If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to help me reach my goal of 5,000 subs by the end of the year. Check out some of my other 1D&D videos, but otherwise, take care.